So we go to the breakout rooms and I'm like prepared and ready. And I've read all my homework and I've turned in my assignment. And I'm like, I know all the answers to all these questions, like totally jacked and proud of myself only for my breakout group for me to be the only person in it to have done the material. I was shocked. I I was just like, how is this happening? Hey there, this is Unburdened by Hope, the podcast that helps you harness your possibility and feel your purpose. I'm your host, Erin Cummings. Here, we're breaking free from the chains of hope and unlocking the power of inspiration within. Get ready to ignite your soul because we're diving deep into the art of letting go, embracing the unknown, and creating a life unburdened by the limitations of hope. Together, we'll uncover the secrets to finding purpose, fueling our passions, and crafting a vibrant existence that sets our hearts on fire. So, Are you ready to burn it down with no longer serving you and step into a life driven by possibility? Let's dive in, my friends, and unleash our boundless potential. We are at lucky number 13 podcast. Oh my God. Like BFD, we made it this far. Um, Welcome. Welcome to podcast number 13. I have a fish school is well underway for myself and my kids. Yeah, there it's it's more than I expected. <laughs> it's a little more than I expected. Uh, but I will say uh recently I have learned quite the lesson in just a, a concept that I learned in yoga and that I've taught in yoga, but I found it interesting that it came up here. Um, when I teach a yoga class, I don't, I don't actually teach a ton of like, quote unquote philosophy while I do focus on like saying the pose names and it is definitely more like workout movement focused. I do try and incorporate some yoga philosophy throughout the class, but I just say it in a way like I'm speaking to you and not like I'm reading from ancient yoga texts and saying all of the jargon and even like incorporating Sanskrit. And I know that that's kind of like a, that can be like, it gets a little dicey, right? Like when, when we have stuff like that, but I, I just feel like it's way more digestible for like us to actually put into our lives, but it still has that backbone of yoga philosophy. So this episode is all about um, one of the yamas and niyamas in yoga. So there's actually, if you don't know much about yoga, there's actually eight limbs of yoga and only one of those, they're like the pillars of yoga and what you practice. And only one of the, one of the eight is actually asana or movement. Um, the rest of it's all philosophy based and how you're living and like there's breathing, there's like meditation, there's surrender, um, self-improvement. There, there's all these other kind of things that like really hold yoga up and being in handstand is just like barely a blip on the like yoga map of how to, um, but like I said, I don't like speak directly to like the Sanskrit and stuff in class, but I did, a, a, it was a while ago, I used to teach like a girl's middle school and high school, like girls basketball team would come in every once in a while to do a yoga practice to just like stretch and kind of get their body moving. And, you know, like that, those age of kids are totally awkward because they have like no body awareness whatsoever. But then we all expect them to like play sports and become professional athletes at like such a young age. But most of them are just like crazy in development mode and just have no idea what's going on. Um, and yoga is honestly such a great tool. Yoga, even Pilates is like such a great tool to like bring body aware, spatial and body awareness to these kids. Um, and the other thing that's hard about that age group is like, they all just kind of dick around, right? Like they don't care. They're, they're too cool. They're too whatever. And you know, like they, they had to be there. Right. So I usually tried to make it like a fun class. Like I get it. I was that age at one point too. Um, I usually, I, I would try and make it fun and like make it interesting and make it like a, a learning coaching experience for them. 
um, not just like a frou-frou yoga class. So like, especially in that aspect, like me telling them about yoga philosophy and the Bhagavad Gita is just like, oh my God, it's a total snooze fest for them. So if I can put it into more digestible, understandable words and language, like it definitely comes across a lot better. So we had kind of gone through class and, you know, it, it's like any other classroom with kids. Like there's the really chatty one, the one who kind of just like leads the pack, but also doesn't make great decisions, but she's definitely like the cool one. Um, so she, this type of person, girl was like, obviously in the class and she dicked around and it's fine. And I, I don't care, you know, like whether they paid for it or their parents paid for it or the coach paid for it. Like they were in class, they showed up like, Hey, let's just participate. So we get to the end of class. And like I talked about last week, like we always end in Shavasana and at my studio, we put cold lavender towels on everyone's head. Um, it's a nice little perk of the studio and some people really love it. And some of these girls like really loved it as well. Well, if you're not (laughs) expecting it or used to it, or if you get very uncomfortable, I don't know if y'all know, like when you get really uncomfortable, there's like the uncomfortable giggle and the uncomfortable crying. It's like kind of the same, it comes from like the same, I think the same area of your brain and you just like do one or the other. Um, I usually get uncomfortable and giggle. Uh, But yeah, some people just like, I'm sure you know these people that just like start bawling and you're like, what is going on? Um, But yeah, so that happened. So, you know, I like put a towel on the head and then it's like the uncomfortable giggle starts. And then, you know, it sets off an array of like snowball giggles throughout the class. And look, like as the leader, the teacher in the room, you can look around and see like who's trying really hard to just like do the thing, like do the exercise. And you can look around and see who doesn't give a shit. And you can look around and see who's just like, eh, it's not that I don't give a shit, but it's not that I'm really trying, but like I I did it. So we're at the point of Shavasana. I'm putting the stuff on their heads. We have a, a giggler and I stop everyone and I tell them, about what I'm about to tell you. And there is, um, in the yamas and niyamas, which are one of the other, uh, two of the other pillars of yoga, it talks about what's called non-stealing or ashtaya in Sanskrit. Um, so yeah, it's like, you could see it as non-stealing, like, Hey, don't go to the store and steal shit. Don't steal people's money. Don't steal people's stuff. (laughs) Don't steal their car. Um, but I, the way I really like to look at it and the way I like to explain it to people that I think is a way in which that comes across that people understand and that you could put into practice besides like not actually stealing things is also not stealing people's time. And so I had talked to this group and, you know, I had told them the whole thing about not stealing people's time. And I was like, you know you might think this is funny. You might not take it seriously, but I was like, we all have towels over our faces and you can't see on, you know, who's next to you on the mat. You might know who it is, but I said, you can't see how much that person might need this right now. And all you're doing, if you're giggling is stealing that time, that maybe that one and only chance this person had to themselves to rest. And I think that really hit home for them. And they were quiet after and they let each of them rest. And then after every class after that, they took it a lot more seriously. We dicked around, like I'll dick around too in class. Like there's a time and a place and then there's a time and a place to take it seriously. And they really learned how. So the thing that I realized then recently, it came back up. I you know, started my master's program. I have what I'm taking the online version. So I have one class that's like what they call asynchronous. So if you had a kid in school during COVID, that's like totally triggering. Um, but 
it's like you go at your own pace and you learn and you read and you read and you read and you read and you read. And you read. Oh my God, there's more reading. So much reading. Like I did not expect the amount of like words on papers. Holy crap. Um, but in my other class, it's like an interactive online Zoom experience class. And so much so I actually really appreciate the instructor. Like if you black out your screen, like I'm there participation. <laughs> if you black out your screen, the professor will like look at your the name on your blacked out screen and say, hey, hey, Billy Joe Bob, are you there? Can you answer this question? And then like Billy Joe Bob has to be like, oh shit. And then like turn, maybe they turn their screen on or they don't, but like they end up usually responding. Um, and I really appreciate that because then you get like this full interactive class experience. Well, along with this online class, he, my professor wants all of us to pre-read all of the material and already have an assignment done for that material. So we actually have to turn our assignment in. It's like due, like I think class starts at six and the assignment to turn in closes at 6 p.m. So the assignment for the, I basically I'm working a week ahead. So you have to read all the material, you have to turn in your paper, and you have to do all of it before class starts because he, the professor, wants you to be able to participate in the discussion, which I'm like, yeah, I get it. So we are rolling with class and I, you know, the breakout rooms, like I get it, you know, like breakout rooms, like, oh my God, do we have to do breakout rooms? I get it. But it's an interactive experience. It's a way to break up the class. It's a way to get people to know each other, especially in an online atmosphere where like, there's not a lot of connection. I, I mean, I totally, totally get it. So we go to the breakout rooms and I'm like prepared and ready. And I've read all my homework and I've turned in my assignment. And I'm like, I know all the answers to all these questions, like totally jacked and proud of myself. Only for my breakout group for me to be the only person in it to have done the material. I was shocked. Like I, I, I was just like, how is this happening? So of course, because they didn't read anything, then I have to give a synopsis of what I, what I took away from the reading. And then we have are supposed to be analyzing, it was a case study. And so we're supposed to be analyzing this case study together and then asking these like pointed questions. And we all know that like, we're gonna go back to our regular classroom and our professor is gonna be like, all right, team, whatever, what's your response? And so I just told all of them, I was like, I'm answering this question. <laughs> it's just like, these are the answers. This is what you'll say if he calls on us. And it, if it's wrong, you can tell him that you didn't read the material and you got the answer for me. Like, I was just like, what the hell? I just, I have this mentality now. Like I did, I didn't when I was an undergrad, like I didn't care to read or honestly even go to half of my classes for like the first year and a half. Um, until my husband was done with school and then he like we moved in together and then he made me he made me go to school <laughs> I'm a solid like B student okay like and I'm, I'm happy with that like I appreciate the potential for growth um but you know I I was so bummed like I felt like they were totally stealing this experience from me and because they were unprepared like why not? Like I'm paying all this money to go to grad school and I want to get something out of it and I want growth and I want to push myself. So why not just like read the material and ask the questions and participate in the discussion? Like I, I, I do not understand the mentality of sitting in the back of the room and letting life happen. Like I, if you are an introvert and that whole thing, just totally, like, if this is my, I had this conversation with my husband and he's a total introvert and he's like, Aaron, some people just don't want to answer questions <laughs> in front of the entire class. And I'm like, I totally get that. I totally 100% get that. 
And we are given the opportunity to do smaller discussion times where you're not in front of an entire group. And then you can showcase that like you at least read the material and had something to contribute. And then when we get back to the big classroom, let someone else take the lead on answering for the group. But like, at least you participated, you know, at least you read the material, at least you came to class with some sort of frame of mind of what we were talking about and what we were discussing. You know, like, I don't expect everyone in class to like, be wearing like a I'm in this program t-shirt situation but I I definitely expected I hoped this is the problem I hoped everyone was doing what I was doing and like uh hi we can't be doing that we have to say fuck hope and I can only control what I do and that means showing up every time and doing the work. And if this happens again, it's like, okay, I now need to, just like last episode, I now need to make a new choice. What I also realized and like having all of this happen was I had this realization of also like, oh my God, how am I stealing other people's time too? Like, when am I the one in my life? Like, and in other people's lives, like when am I the one showing up unprepared, unread, not ready, wasting, stealing time from others? And that really got me thinking about like, even just like meetings, staff meetings, like working with other um, employees and all that stuff where like, how many times have I just derailed the conversation or you know, maybe someone didn't, you know, brought something to my attention that I didn't think was important, but they did. But because it, you know, it wasn't important to me, we just kind of like moved on. And so I, I was curious as you're going through your week this week is to maybe notice those scenarios and those situations in which like you've had your time stolen and you have to have both, right? Because like, if you only focus on the time (laughs) on you getting your time stolen, you're going to get a chip on your shoulder and then you're going to get all resentful. And then you're going to start the downward spiral thing. And then we have to start this podcast like all over. And then you're stealing my time again. See, see how that all worked. See how that just like back, back over here. Yeah. So you can't just focus on like, who is stealing your time. You also have to do the mirror of that. And it's like, well, whose time are you stealing too? And then that way you can really focus on, okay, well, you know, back to like the relationship episode, like what am I bringing to the table in my relationships? If I'm just bringing like stealing time and complaining, like, you know, late Larry, then it's like, oh, stealing people's time, becoming a problem. I get it. And then it's same thing for you. Like who's constantly stealing your time? Who's, who do you want to move on your rings and go from there? And so I think like, you can't, you can't also hope that they're going to change. Like that's a whole podcast. That's a whole conversation with a professional that you need to seek out. Like that is not me, but you you can't hope that they change and you can't hope that they're going to stop stealing your time because that's when you have to take action and that's when you have to focus on what you can control in, the t- in, in that aspect. Um, but as you're moving throughout this week, like really, really notice like when you have these moments of what's something that I'm working on, that I'm taking really seriously that someone has stolen my time away from. And then you can like, honestly too, like, add a boundary of some sort to that situation and then flip it missy elliott flip it and reverse it whose time did i steal this week and what new choice can i make there like how can i add a boundary again of like you know hey maybe let's catch up like if you're having a work meeting hey we get two minutes to catch up after that i won't derail you we'll focus on work here we go um, my ADHD, I mean, like us ADHD people, we derail any chance we get. So anytime that someone could like, give me a hard boundary of like, you get two minutes and then we're work talk. I'm like, got it. Thank you. 
Um, but I think it's really important to make sure that you're noticing like the duality and not just only focusing on woe is me getting my time stolen. So as you're moving through this week, your intention is to notice the time and notice who's stealing your time, whose time are you stealing, Ashtaya, non-stealing, that's uh, Yama Niyama from yoga. Um, you can Google it uh, if you want to learn more about all of that kind of stuff too. But um, I thought that was a good, that it was like a good kind of reminder for me this week of like, I had just gotten so irritated of like, I can't believe these people are, aren't participating like I would. And then I was like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, Aaron. Like how many times have you have you stolen someone's time this week too? So um, I will quit stealing your time. I will let you get back to whatever you're doing. Thanks for spending time with me. Um, I do really appreciate it. I would love to hear how these podcasts are going, how they're applying to your life, like what key takeaways um, are you getting from them and uh, stay courageous, capable, and strong. And I will chat with you next week. Thanks for listening to Unburdened by Hope. Go to your favorite podcast app, hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. If you got something out of our show, I'd love to hear from you. Send me your favorite takeaway or any questions you may have to info at aaronccummings.com. You might even just hear the answer in a future episode. Remember, you are capable, you are courageous, and it's up to you to create what's possible.